We're going to begin tonight with a sort of a sickening story about a murder in Portland that should have never happened. Now, of course, you can say that about any murder, but this one is special. It involves repeated domestic violence, and it had the system, prosecutors and judges, trying to keep the alleged killer in jail. And then a Portland group, which is against people being held on bail, paid to set him free. And seven days later, this past Saturday, he's accused of killing his victim. The case involves the murder of a woman named Rachel Abraham. She was 36 years old. I went to her home today in southeast Portland. She lived here with four children, according to court documents. The neighborhood is a series of townhouses squeezed close together. Her ex and the father of two of her kids, 33-year-old Mohammed Osman Adan, is charged with her murder. Neighbors, as you might imagine, are heartbroken. It's bad. This is very bad. Yeah. Very, very bad. I was not even thinking someone in our, our complex was thinking or doing this type of stuff. And when the, the police told me that he has been arrested, has been released, he has been in the monitoring, we don't know all of that, I, uh, all of that thing going on. But anyway, we lost very, very good neighbor. Yeah, I heard that from a lot of folks. We're going to spend a few moments, extra moments, digging deeper into this because there's some things that you should know about. According to court documents, Adon had been arrested earlier this year for domestic violence. Rachel Abraham told police on May 2nd, Adon had punched her in the head two times while she was laying on the couch in the living room. He told, she told police that Adon became enraged because he found a text from a female friend on her phone. She filed a restraining order against him then, and it did very little to help her. On June 23rd, police were back at the home because of a restraining order violation and another assault. This time, she told police Adon had picked arguments with her in front of the children and broke her phone, preventing her from calling for help. Adon further blocked her path numerous times to prevent her from leaving the home, and it got worse. Adon would hold her down. He placed her in a chokehold by pressing down on her windpipe. Abraham start, stated that due to this, it was painful to swallow and hard to breathe. Abraham said she had been foaming at the mouth and believed she was going to pass out. He did this a total of five times throughout the night. Now, I know this is disturbing to hear. It's disturbing to read, but I do think it's important. This was all right out there in the open in public documents for anyone who cared enough to read them, anyone who might think about bailing him out, for example. There's one more bit from the court record about that awful night in June. There was one point during the entire altercation where Adon drug Abraham to the ground and said, I'm going to put you to sleep while kneeling on her throat. Adon told her, I should kill you. The prosecutors warned the court that Adon was a serious threat, writing at the bottom of that court document I've been referring to that offender controls most or all of the victim's daily activities. Victim believes the offender is capable of killing her, repeated violations of the restraining order and or court orders, and offender follows and spies on the victim. Eventually, despite all of that, Adon was able to get out of jail. But on July 26th, he was arrested again, this time for cutting off his GPS monitor and going back into the home of Rachel Abraham. Then on August 19th, a release hearing was held. Prosecutors argued that Adon was dangerous and should not be released and asked for a high bail to keep him in jail. The judge heard arguments from both sides, thought about it, and then agreed with the prosecutors, setting the bail at $20,000 which with bail reform, I'm told, is considered a high amount these days. The very next day, August 20th, a woman in Portland with the Portland Freedom Fund posted the 10% bail that was required, $2,000. I went to her home in Southeast Portland today to ask what sort of background checks she'd done on Adon, how much she'd learned about his previous arrest and those court documents that I've been sharing with you. No one came to the door. She also did not return my phone call. And by now, you know what happened next. Seven days after being bailed out by the Portland Freedom Fund, which is no doubt is a well-meaning group trying to help people in jail, seven days later, Rachel Abraham was dead. Police said neighbors, neighbors called 9-11 August 20th after hearing a fight between a man and a woman. Shortly after that, Adon was on the phone with emergency operators telling them that Abraham was dead. He claimed he had taken a knife from her and was protecting the children in the home. Police found her dead on a bed upstairs. The court documents describe in gruesome detail the many injuries Abraham received. I'm not going to horrify you with that. 
The case is so outrageous, though, that the district attorney today issued a rare statement condemning the group Portland Freedom Fund. It reads in part, Mr. Adan's intent to kill the victim was unambiguous. After the judge set Adan's bail, the Portland Freedom Fund undermined our efforts and the efforts of the court to save the victim's life by using their resources to bail him out. Finally, the Freedom Fund issued its, st its own statement. In Mr. Adan's specific case, the court had deemed him eligible for bail release, and he was referred to us as a financial provider for two small children with a letter of community support. Along with support he was receiving from the community, we were in contact with Mr. Adan throughout the time between his release and rearrest, and did not receive any indications for concern. Here's my opinion on all this. The Freedom Fund is trying to blame the judge for setting any bail at all. That's an argument for a different day. It's hard to believe they researched Adan's background at all. And if they did, it's incredible to me that they decided to help him. I think it's a noble idea to gather up money and get people out of jail who are being held after they're arrested for nonviolent crimes and simply don't have the money to get out. The unfairness of the system lets a rich person easily walk out the door when a poor person is stuck. But the actual process of doing that needs to be informed by some basic common sense. Here was a woman who was crying out for help, filing restraining orders, and you bailed him out, taking beatings, and you bailed him out, strangling the mother of his children, and you bailed him out, controlling her every moment, and you bailed him out, telling her he would kill her, and you bailed him out. It would be easy to, see, to say that the system failed Rachel Abraham, and it sounds to me like that's exactly what the Portland Freedom Fund is doing. But in this case, it seems the system was doing what it could to protect her, and it was the outsiders who failed Rachel Abraham. In my opinion, the Portland Freedom Fund was so concerned about Mohammed Adan that they forgot about Rachel Abraham, and it cost her 